In 2015, uh, my house had flooded. So when this had happened, it had completely ruined my business that I was building. And at the time, it also had pretty much took all my possessions from me at the time. I had a couple cars, and so I had a decent amount of stuff going for me. It wasn't necessarily the highest point in my life, though, either, I wouldn't say. And at the time, that had led me into ending up working at Burger King. And so while I was working at Burger King, I was eating a lot more fast food than normal. And also, when it had flooded, I had stayed in a hotel for like a month or so and that had caused me to not really be able to access cooking stuff so I was eating a pretty tremendous amount of fast food at the time and before I had worked there and did all that I weighed about 126 pounds and I never really ate that much fast food you know it was kind of a just a casual thing just on occasion I would do that not very often though and finally once I'd started working there, that definitely had uh, kind of went out the door. And I quickly began gaining a lot of weight. And I got probably close up to about 180 pounds, so right in the ballpark of that. And once I had you know, reached that weight, I didn't really necessarily have any plans to do a whole lot of change with that. And it just kind of had continued in my life all the way up until about late 2017 probably so in about that period of time and I'd worked another job at that point uh, just very briefly though it wasn't for very long it was only about a month and as that kind of went on I finally closing in closer to 2018 I'd got in a car wreck and it kind of started to change my perspective on life a little bit I kind of realized that I wasn't taking very good care of my health I wasn't really taken my life that serious and it was kind of time to turn that around a little bit and I was doing a lot of research on like personal development and all sorts of ways to improve myself and one of the main things that seemed valuable to me was getting healthier and losing weight so gradually I didn't really know too much about it I just wanted to lose weight anyway and I started just by even at Burger King I had attempted it a bit just by eating the salads there but I was so uneducated about nutrition that it was incredibly hard for me to lose weight those salads there are not healthy at all for you and there's not really any nutritional value at all it's actually quite the opposite especially if you're eating cheese and such so doing any of that type of stuff wasn't really helping me get anywhere and then progressing from that I ended up losing a little bit of weight uh, the first thing I cut out was fast food though I made a decision that I wasn't gonna eat any more fast food I realized that that was like the number one cause of most of my weight gain so cutting out that probably made one of the largest difference right out the front I wasn't really eating that good and I was kind of combining it with uh, Winco salads if you have that you might be familiar with it nothing any you know nothing special just like iceberg lettuce some cheese and meat and dressing which those types of things really aren't going to be all that healthy for you in the first place and I had started doing my walking and running and all those types of habits were kind of starting to get formed so it was kind of creating a little bit of a powerhouse I was starting to kind of get some traction and it was a little bit hard for me to do really much physical activity at this point you know nothing like you know seriously big what really had moved me into getting more physical was I was doing garage selling and this was before I had decided to go full-time uh, like eBay or anything like that I was going garage selling and you know both of the events it I walked about five or six miles and then after that I just kind of gradually just kept that habit and was able to continually walk that type of distance on a regular basis after a while uh, you know at first walking six miles was quite a bit harder on my body than I had first anticipated but after I got over the initial hump of that things started to progress a little bit faster and then I replaced my breakfast with a fruit and vegetable smoothie so it was only fruits and vegetables at this point uh, for breakfast and I maintained that and just between cutting out fast food and the smoothie really that was like the biggest gains that I had found with any diet stuff so far at that point it made pretty much everything a breeze at that point because I was starting to gain a lot more energy especially eating healthier even though I wasn't really doing 
everything nutritious, you know, everything I was eating wasn't necessarily the best. It was mostly that I kept it around having that one meal that I knew would be healthy, and it was giving me a lot more energy than I was used to. So I was able to really start getting a lot of exercise in. Let's go. So I would say that was probably the biggest factor in me progressing. And then after that, I cut out cheese and meat at the same time. I decided, well, dairy and meat, I suppose. So I decided that I was going to cut out all dairy products at this point. And that wasn't quite easy because, you know, as I've grown up, that's been kind of a cultural norm is to pretty much eat those types of things. And I don't want to promote you to eat a certain way or you to follow exactly what I'm doing. I highly recommend that you do your own research to decide what kind of diet would benefit your life the most. And for me, I decided that I was going to remove those two things. And I did start to gradually notice between removing the fast food and removing those two things, I started noticing things like my acid reflex had gone away. And I actually had... At a certain point, I was getting prescription pills for it, but I never really took them. It was a very short amount of time. I had just kind of blown it off, but I had acid reflux for many years, and at this point, it was actually starting to completely go away. And I also noticed that my eczema was starting to go away. So that's just basically like a thing that forms on your skin that's kind of itchy. Uh, you'd have to look it up if you're unsure what I'm talking about. But really with doing that, and between those two things, it actually was starting to make a really big difference, especially removing the dairy products made it a lot easier to start losing weight. And at this point, I had probably lost a majority of that weight within, probably within a six month span, I would say, I had lost a majority of that weight. I would probably say I probably had lost nearly 40 pounds within that amount of time frame, And that was cutting out that stuff and I just kind of kept working on and, and going towards it and over the time I did gradually peak back up though so I lost the 60 pounds but then I started gaining muscle so the weight necessarily I wouldn't say didn't stick at that low uh, 60 pound loss over time uh, this is more in recent time though so now in 2020 of course so I, I weigh about 150 pounds now but most of that is now muscle and in between there too, I cut out wheat, and then I was able to cut out added sugar successfully. I'd have to say added sugar was probably the hardest thing that I cut out. Uh, that was similar to quitting nicotine, I would say, in terms of like difficulty. And it took me quite a while to quit nicotine. I mean, that wasn't really something that was all that easy. So I would put that relatively close. I would say nicotine is harder. Nicotine definitely still has like an effect that after you've quit, you kind of still occasionally have a craving for it. It's not so much with like added sugar. Uh, granted, I still eat a good amount of natural sugar. Today, I kind of splurged on it, I would say a bit myself. But just in general, I would say it was really close to actually quitting uh, nicotine. And, and if you do look at the products that you eat, you actually will find that a majority of those products will contain added sugar. I mean, from your ketchup to pretty much anything anymore contains added sugar. And it's because of the fact that it's addictive. So it would be well worthwhile checking out uh, some research regarding that if you are interested in turning your diet around. I think probably diet is probably one of the most important things, especially if you're working on improving yourself and you want to, you know, maybe reach a higher amount of success in life or you just want more energy, anything. I mean, I think this is probably the number one thing that if you were to work on it and research it, and like I said, you don't have to do vegan, you don't have to do this or that. If I was personally going to recommend anything of researching. Vegan diet is really good. I've had a lot of good success with it. Uh, the only problem is, is if you're not going to do all the research, like I spent months researching it. Like I would come out here every day when I was going on a run and I would be listening to, you know, a couple hours of, you know, accredited doctors talking about you know, what's good and what's bad, essentially. And so I did forget to mention I cut out oil as well just recently. And so that was one of the last things that I've now removed from my diet. 
And not quite as hard as that might seem. It's really easy to cook without oil as well too. But definitely really worth researching those things, especially because if, if you haven't really heard of someone removing those things, definitely do your research and see why people are eating those types of things. You would be surprised because even my whole life, I never really questioned those things. Like if you look at the food pyramid in school, right? If, if that's what you had at least, you'll see a lot of things on there like recommending a certain amount of dairy or this and that. And then if you actually dive into it and research it, you'll see that actually uh, cheese, for example, I believe it's over 90% fat. It actually will make it extremely hard for you to lose weight just if by keeping something like that in your diet. And those types of products are recommended on the food pyramid. Uh, you'd have to do some research uh, it actually increased uh, since the early 2000s. Uh, the obesity rate in America has almost followed cheese consumption down to a T. So looking into stuff like that for yourself, you know, don't just listen to me on this video and stop eating cheese. I would hope that you would at least take the time to go investigate this yourself and find out what's really worth removing and what's not. And so like I remove processed foods, that's a huge thing that is an American diet right now is processed foods. I've been trying to remove non-organic foods completely out too, although it's kind of hard and there is certain things if you really do the research, you'll find that there are certain foods that are better than others uh, in terms of like pesticide contamination. So if you picked like a pineapple, for example, isn't gonna be that high of pesticide contamination mostly because of the fact of how the pineapple is. It really has its own defenses towards pests and such. But if you had a strawberry, for example, that's one of the highest contaminated foods with pesticides. So buying that organic is always going to be worth your money, in my opinion, if you look between the two. And, and strawberries, you know, they don't have very much defenses, so they'll get eaten really easily uh, by insects and such. So really in conclusion with this, Take the time to do your research. I would recommend at least looking into like a whole food plant-based diet would be worthwhile looking into. A vegan diet would be worth looking into. I've seen a lot of people having success with keto diets and things like that. So maybe even just reaching out and just getting a little bit out of your comfort zone of what you would normally eat. Do the research and see what types of things would benefit you. And most importantly, Experiment it with yourself. See how your energy changes. See how your lifestyle changes as you decrease these types of things. Like I've seen in my life, I almost have no acne anymore as well by decreasing these things. And I believe almost all of that was due to just added sugar was any acne. Not at this stage in my life that I have that much of it, but that's another thing that's just practically completely went away just by changing my diet. So anyways, let me know down in the comments below how you guys eat. Uh, if you guys have any, you know, comments, suggestions, anything like that, I love to learn more about diet, and I do actually plan to have quite a bit more in-depth videos like this, talking a bit more about diet, and I might have uh, maybe some stuff with like heavier factual stuff. So just like how I mentioned those studies in the video, I highly recommend that you do the research yourself, just because that's not something right away that I readily have at hand while I'm on a walk out here. So anyways, thanks guys for watching. Make sure you guys leave a like, a subscription if you enjoyed the video, and have a great day.